Welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be discussing if you should be solo mining or pool mining depending on your hardware that you have for mining. Make sure to like the video and subscribe so we can hit 3000 subscribers. Also, if you have any questions, you can ask them in the comments or in the Discord. First link in the description below for that. So quickly, I'll give an explanation between pool mining and solo mining. Pool mining is where you mine with other people on a coin and then you collectively hit a block you get rewards in proportion to the amount of work or hash rate that you put into that block. Solo mining is self-explanatory where you mine on your own in hopes to find a block on the network. You'll get to keep all of the block reward yourself. Now with solo mining, you might have to pay a fee to use someone else's node to mine through, but if you mine on your own node, then you get to keep 100% of the block reward. So that's the simple explanation of solo or pool mining. Now let's get into the benefits and negatives of pool mining and solo mining. So when you're pool mining, firstly the benefit is that you don't need a lot of hashing power to get payouts for coins. This means that there's a lower threshold for miners to get into mining. This increases the decentralization of any coin that has mining pools. The next benefit of pools is that you get regular payouts because a pool will most likely get blocks if you are mining on the top pools of any coin. This ensures that you get regular payouts whenever a pool hits a block and you get a share and this means that it's guaranteed 99% of the time. The other 1% could be that the pool doesn't hit a block which is very unlikely with pools that have a lot of hash rate on them. Another benefit is that you don't have to set up any nodes to mine to a pool. A lot of mining nowadays has been simplified so it's pretty much plug and play with a few simple steps that are easy to figure out. For GPU and CPU miners, it's a bit more effort, but for ASIC miners, it's very simple. Lastly, pools allow for miners to work together to find blocks, which means in this sense that the big network like Bitcoin or Litecoin require a ton of hashing power, and I think there's not many people out there that can even solo mine these coins feasibly. So therefore, you get access to the biggest networks without having to shell out millions of dollars for miners. So those are the main benefits of pool mining. Now let's move into the negatives of pool mining. The obvious being that you don't get 100% of the block reward, but that really can't be navigated around without solo mining. However, the biggest downside to pool mining is the share system that a pool uses. So there are many different share systems which pay out in different ways. As we can see here, we have four main ones and they all have different benefits and negatives. Some will estimate how much you should earn, which could be losing you coins if they hit a load of blocks in the pool. Some of them pay out directly how much effort you put in which means that you only get paid if the pool finds a block. Lastly, you have to rely on the pool to get payouts right, which means that you need to trust in the pool that they'll pay out to your wallet. It's happened in the past where some pools are taking more profits for themselves and they would be taken from your profits. But all you have to do to counteract this is stay away from shady pools, do your research into every new pool that you're about to mine to. Simple searches around reviews of the pool and how long they've been around will help in this regard. Now let's move on to solo mining benefits and negatives. The biggest benefit is the block reward which we'll keep 100% of. Now the next benefit has two sides and that is the luck that you have on a network. So you can get lucky and the network could give you a block with only using 50% of the needed hash rate. However, it could also give you a block after you've put 150% of the needed hash rate into it. So this means that you can get lucky or unlucky on a network. There really isn't any way to help with luck. The only thing that you can do to help is the latency to the node, which is normally very low if you're using somebody else's node in the country that you're mining in. But if you use your own node, it basically gets it down to zero, which could help you with luck slightly on the network. But it's gonna be a very small percentage. But there are things that you can't control like difficulty swings on the network. If difficulty drops, you have a higher chance to find a block but if it goes up, you have a lower chance to find a block. So luck in this regards is a scale from 0% all the way up to an infinite percentage. But once you put in more than 100% of the effort needed into a block, you become unlucky. You can see this on two miners where the blocks below 100% are in green because they are lucky and anything over 100% is considered unlucky because they put too much hash rate into the block that was needed. That's really a big main risk that you take when solo mining and you kind of have to just be lucky, I guess. There's no really way to get around it or to give you an edge on luck in terms of solo mining. Now, there's also a discussion of if you have enough hash rate to even viably solo mine. 
So to actually solo mine, I'd say that you need to be finding a block at least once a week. This number is going to be different for each coin as the block rewards can be low or high and it can take longer or shorter to find a block depending on what the network rewards are for each block. So I'm just going to go through the top 15 mineable coins and tell you the hash rate needed to solo mine these coins to find one block a week on average. Before I do that, I want to mention these figures change on a daily basis and I'll tell you how to calculate that so you can do it at home at any time after we've gone through the top 15 mineable coins. I've converted these numbers here in a scale I'm working with, so I'll leave it linked in the description below if you want to convert the hash rates yourself, if you calculate it yourself as well. Also, all these hash rates are for the individual algorithms of the coins, so you need to make sure that you calculate your miner on different algorithms. For example, Bitcoin is on SHA-256, however Dogecoin is on a different algorithm, so whichever miner you're using will have different hash rates. That doesn't really matter for ASIC miners too much because they're kind of set to one algorithm, but for GPU mining, Ethereum Classic has a different algorithm to Casper Coin, so the hash rates on your GPUs need to be tested for each of these algorithms. Anyway, let's get into this list of top 15 mineable coins and the hash rate needed to feasibly solo mine one block a week. Number one, Bitcoin, you need 100 petahash worth of hash rate. Number two, Dogecoin, you need around 70 giga hash. Number three, Litecoin, you need 200 giga hash. Number four, Monero, you need four mega hash. Number five, Ethereum Classic, you need three giga hash. Number six, Casper Coin, you need six giga hash. Number seven, Dynex, you need 800 kilo hash. Number eight, Ravencoin, you need 700 mega hash. Number nine, Nexa, you need two giga hash. Number 10, Conflux, you need five mega hash. Number 11, Cadena, you need nine tera hash. Number 12, Radiant, you need 40 giga hash. Number 13, Ironfish, you need 120 giga hash. Number 14, Ergo, you need 3.5 giga hash. And lastly, number 15, Flux, you need 500 souls. So if your coin wasn't on the list, then I'll show you how to calculate this number easily. All you have to do is head over to Hashrate.no, click on the coin that you want to solo mine, then head over to the calculator tab by here. Once here, you can see below it tells you how many days it would roughly take to mine one block. All you do from here is play around with the mega hash number at the top here, and you can edit this until it says seven days to find a block. It's as simple as that, therefore we'd be getting one block every seven days, which is one week. Whatever figure you typed in to get the block every seven days is how much hash rate you need to actually mine viably on that coin. If you wanna know what GPU you need to achieve this hash rate, just click on the benchmarks tab over here and it'll show you the hash rates of a GPU or ASICs. And then you just divide how many the top, let's just say GPU is, into the hash rate and that will give you how many GPUs you need to achieve the hash rate to solo mine this coin. So you can do this for any coin that's listed on Hashrate NO. I believe all the top coins are listed on Hashrate NO. If you need any help with coins that aren't listed on there, please just leave a comment and I'll let you know how much feasibly it would take to solo mine on that coin. So that's the main differences between solo and pool mining. My advice would be to only solo mine if you can hit one block every week. And if you don't have the hash rate to do this, then I'd recommend pool mining as it eliminates the risk of luck on the network and solo mining with lower hash rates. If you guys have any questions around the topic, I will try help you out in the comments and expand on anything I've missed in the video. Make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this.